Well, as the legislature ended its session on Friday, it approved a $117.5 billion state budget. The plan contains $3 billion more in spending than the governor's original budget request. It has a 3% raise for all employees with additional pay increases for Florida Department of Law Enforcement Special Agents, Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services employees, and state prison officers. Per student spending in K-12 public education will grow by $240 per student to just under $9,000. That's $83 more per student than the governor wanted. The legislature was also more generous than DeSantis with its funding of higher education, with $2.4 billion for state colleges, $6.8 billion for state universities, and $243 million for historically black colleges. All told, several billion over the governor's request. Jeff, nobody's had time to climb or to, to comb through the entire budget yet, but do you think that this budget addresses the major problems that we have here in the state of Florida? I think it takes, I think this is a, a, a budget that sustains. I don't think it solves any of the major problems that we have in the state of Florida. There's nothing here that's going to solve the insurance crisis, the housing affordability crisis. They did put $100 million towards prisons, but the, they have a report from KPMG that says you need to spend $2 billion on your prison system immediately. What do they need to spend the money on? On where would when I? When it comes to prisons. Oh, on the yeah. when it comes to prisons, sure. Well, look, their facilities are 30, 40, 50 years old. Mm -hmm. um, they're falling apart. They, they need immediate needs on electrical systems, security systems. 85% of Florida's prisons are not air conditioned. Uh, just the basics of the prison system have been ignored. I've heard for years prison guards are underpaid here in Florida. Absolutely they're underpaid and that's why does we have... Does the 3% increase help at all? It does help a little bit, but I mean inflation is going to largely eat that up. I mean the challenge is you have facilities in Florida with a 72% vacancy rate at that prison for corrections officers. Many have 60% vacancy rates. Mm -hmm. So you have real problems. Overall we lose about a third of our corrections officers on, a, an, on an annual basis. So we're just all constantly bringing in new corrections officers. Uh, my, there, there was a bill to uh, increase base pay for teachers across Florida from a, the current 47000 to about 65000 That was on Escamani's bill from Orlando. She's a Democrat, didn't go, didn't go anywhere in the legislature. But, you know, with, with teacher shortages out there and the problems that Jeff mentioned uh, in prisons and uh, homeowners insurance, et cetera, did this budget do anything to solve our problems? I don't, I don't think so, right? To the point that we also have a huge teacher shortage, like you mentioned. It is for the party that talks about they care about public safety and our kids, it, this budget does not demonstrate that those are their priorities because of these shortages that we see. I think that we need something that is actually going to put uh, money back in people's pockets, right? Making sure that folks are able to pay their bills, have some relief when it comes to property insurance and rent, and this budget didn't do it. I am glad as an adjunct professor, though, that there's money going into higher ed, but I think that that is just a, 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 a first step that we need to do there. Were you surprised at all that money because a lot of money is going into higher ed. I was surprised. Yeah. I was surprised, especially when, you know, there's sociology is being taken out of classrooms that we can't teach it anymore in um, in higher ed. So it's, it's very interesting how, how the legislature picks and chooses their priorities. So, Tom, would you agree with Jeff that, that, that this, it doesn't really advance this, but it kind of keeps us where we're at? Uh, how, how would you describe what you know about the budget so far? Yeah, I think it's, you know, they've done some things in health care, I think, that, are, that are, are good public policy, and housing's been a priority for the Senate president. Um, but I do think it's largely a continuation budget, and where I think that, you know, most of the challenges facing this state are going to come through the Medicaid program, its share of the federal spending for CMS on, on low-income health care, and education. And we've just got to do more in public education for traditional public schools. They're being left behind. Uh, legislature spends 80% of its time talking about the 20% of the kids that are in charter schools and private schools and there's not enough focus on the children that are being left behind the public education system and making sure that that $9,000 they're paying in the FEFP to fund public schools rises to a level that's being received by some of these charter schools and private schools who are doing a lot of private fundraising and requiring parental involvement and that sort of thing so it's not an apples to oranges comparison. It's going to be the challenge over time. What do you think the right level of spending? What what should that nine thousand dollars be? If if nine thousand is not the right number, what's the right number? Well, I'm not qualified to answer that honestly. I could throw a number at you, but I'm not qualified to answer that. I just know that that the the system has a lot of legacy issues that these new fancy charter schools and private schools don't have. They have they don't have the fundraising ability. They can't compel parents to participate in high end charitable events like I've had to participate in Tallahassee when my daughter was there. And so, so they just don't have the same tools in their toolkit that some of these schools have. 
And I'm just saying that the comparisons between charters, privates, and the tra traditional public schools just isn't a fair comparison until we get the numbers up where they have the resources. And Patrick, what do you think about the budget? It really was a budget without a theme. We really didn't spend money to try and focus money on trying to solve anything. You know, uh, we still fall behind in transportation. We still still fall behind in education. We still fall behind everywhere. And so there was just not a whole lot of leadership here, either from the governor or for the speaker or, or the, the president, and saying, you know, this is what we're going to try and accomplish. Let's throw a lot of money at something this, this year to try and move forward on it. And, uh, and so, like I said, I think it maintains everything. Um, you know, nobody got too hurt, or, but nobody also got too rewarded either. All right. Well.